Number 135. What is the measure of angle A in the figure shown below? Now what we have here is a quadrilateral, a four-sided figure. The sum of all of the interior angles of a quadrilateral is 360. And you could determine that using this formula. N represents the number of sides in a polygon. In this case, we have a four-sided figure. 4 minus 2 is 2, and 180 times 2 is 360. So all four angles must add up to 360 in this example. So let's write an equation. 5x plus 10 plus 6x plus 20 plus 7x plus 4x. All of these angles must add up to 360. So let's combine like terms. 5x plus 6x, that's 11x, plus 7x, that's 18x, plus 4x, that's 22x. And then we have 10 plus 20, which is 30. So let's solve the equation. Let's subtract both sides by 30. 360 minus 30 is 330. Now let's divide both sides by 22. So x is going to be 330 divided by 22. Therefore, x is equal to 15. Now that we have the value of x, we can calculate the measure of angle A, which is 5x plus 10. So that's going to be 5 times 15 plus 10. 5 times 15 is 75. 75 plus 10 is 85. So this is the measure of angle A. Answer choice C is the answer. 136. The ratio of two complementary angles is 7 to 8. What is the measure of the larger angle? So first, we need to be familiar with this expression. Complementary angles. Angles that are complementary to each other add up to 90. So let's say the two angles are x and y. The sum of these two angles must be 90. Now the ratio, 7 to 8, that is the ratio of the two angles. So if we write it as a fraction, 7 over 8, that's going to equal to x over y. Assuming that x is the smaller angle, and y is the larger one. So right now we have two equations and two variables. Let's cross multiply. 8x will equal 7y. Now our goal is to calculate the value of y. So let's solve for x in this equation by dividing both sides by 8. So x is 7 over 8 times y. So let's replace x with that. So we're going to have 7 over 8 times y plus y is equal to 90. Now what we can do is multiply by 8 just to get rid of the fraction. So 8 times 7 over 8, that's going to be 7. And then 8 times y, it's just 8y. And then 8 times 90, 8 times 9 is 72, 8 times 90 is 720. 7 plus 8 is 15. Now, let's divide both sides by 15. 720 divided by 15 is 48. So this is the measure of the larger angle, which means C is the correct answer. Number 137. What is the measure of angle ABD in the figure below? Now, notice that angle ABD and angle CBD, they form a linear pair because ABC is a straight line. Because these two angles form a linear pair, they are supplementary, which means that they add up to 180. The angle of a straight line is always 180 degrees. So angle ABD, which is x squared minus 6, plus angle CBD, which is 8x plus 33, these two angles must add up to 180. 
So let's go ahead and calculate x. First, let's combine like terms. Negative 6 plus 33 is positive 27. Next, let's subtract both sides by 27. One eighty minus twenty seven is one fifty three. So we have x squared plus eight x is equal to one fifty three. Now we might be able to factor this expression. So let's move the one fifty three to the left side. So we're gonna have x squared plus eight x minus one fifty three is equal to zero. Now what two numbers multiply to negative one fifty three but add to eight? So what are some factors of 153? 3 goes into 153. 153 divided by 3 is 51. Now 51 is divisible by 17. So we could try 17. 153 divided by 17 is 9. 17 and 9, they differ by 8. So let's use negative 9 and positive 17 because they add up to 8. So to factor, it's going to be x plus 17 times x minus 9. Set in each factor equal to 0. We have two possible values for x, 9 and negative 17. Now, if we plug in negative 17 into 8x plus 33, we're going to get a negative answer, which means that we can get rid of that answer. So the x value that we're going to use is x is equal to 9. So now we can determine the measure of angle ABD, which is x squared minus 6. So this is going to be 9 squared minus 6. 9 squared is 81. 81 minus 6 is 75. So C is the right answer. Number 138. What is the value of y in the figure shown below? Go ahead and try this problem. Now, the first thing that we can notice is that these two angles form a linear pair, which means this angle, let's call it x plus 102, has to add up to 180. Subtracting both sides by 102, we can see that x is 180 minus 102, which is 78. So let's put 78 here. Now let's call this angle Z. The three angles in a triangle must always add to 180. So that means that Z plus 46 plus 78 is 180. 46 plus 78 that's going to be 124. So Z is going to be 180 minus 124, which is 56. Now notice that Z and Y form a linear pair. So Z plus Y is 180. So we have 56 plus Y is 180. So Y is going to be 180 minus 56 which is 124. So that's it for this problem. That's all we need to do. Answer choice D is the correct answer. Number 139. Lines M and K are parallel in the figure shown below. What is the value of X? So here we have a free response problem. Now you need to be familiar with vertical angles, corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, and things like that. So these two angles are vertical angles, which means that they're congruent. Because these two lines are parallel to each other, these two angles are congruent. They're corresponding angles. So this is 65. Now we can calculate this angle. Let's call that angle Z. Z plus 40 plus 65 must add up to 180. As we said before, the three angles inside a triangle must add up to 180. So 40 plus 65 is 105. 
and z is going to be 105, I mean 180 minus 105, which is 75. Now these two angles are corresponding angles, so that, that's 75, and these two angles form a linear pair, which means they add up to 180. So x is going to be 180 minus 75, which is 105. So this is the answer for the problem.